Lord. Let's uh, go straight to the word of the Lord. Let's open the theme of this conference, which is in Hebrews 5. Would like us to read from there. Hebrews 5, verse 14. These are words that we have spoken by the writer to the, the Hebrew believers. Let's begin so that you get the context. Let's begin from verse. Uh, let's begin from verse 9. So that you can get the context of where he was coming from. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Called of God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Of whom, now listen to that, of whom we have many things to say and hard to explain, seeing you are dull of hearing. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, uh, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as of need of milk and not of solid food. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe, not the other babe, eh? <laughs> but solid food belongs to them that are of what? Full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Our theme is actually the first part of that first, but solid food is for the mature. Another, give me the New King James. It uses meat. But solid food, uh, uh, food belongs to those who are of full age. Give me that translation that says, but uh, meat is for the... I've not gotten that. It's King James. Yeah, King James, the old one. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses uh, exercised to discern both good and evil. Now, if you listen to the tone of language used by the, the writer there, I want just to uh, expose the, the theme of our conference for this season. He's, he started introducing uh, things about Jesus Christ where he, because these are Hebrews, so they knew the priesthood of Aaron. And that's why this book has a lot of comparison. He begins to tell them, you know Aaron the priest because you are Jews. The book is written primarily to the Hebrews. So he begins to tell them, you know the Jews, uh, you know the Aaronic priesthood, you know the Levitical priesthood. And then he comes uh, on board and introduces Jesus. And then because Jesus is not from the Levitical priesthood, he begins to paint this picture that here is a man who has come, ordained by God as a priest, but not in the order of Aaron because he's not a Levite. Then he says he is a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And then as he begins to introduce these things, he comes to the realization that these people, the people he's writing to, some of the things he's saying are, take me back to that verse where he tells them, these are hard things. And I am, he, he started like uh, feeling afraid that they would not comprehend what he's saying. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. What the writer is saying is, there is still a lot to know about this Christ, this priest, there is still so much we can say about him, but, but then he digests and says, I am afraid that if I continue saying those things, you may not get them because that's now where he begins to tell them. Although by now, judging by the time you have spent listening to the gospel, and especially when you consider these are Jewish believers, so before Jesus came, 
Every Sabbath they had, the, the tradition of the Jews was every Sabbath you would read a portion from the law, that is the Pentateuch, then you would read a portion from poetry, that is now Psalms, Job, what now we consider to be uh, uh, poetry. Then they would read a portion from the prophets, and uh, having listened to that for years, you would expect when Jesus came, they were on a higher platform. So they were supposed to comprehend these things, Haraka Sana. Yet, now the writer says, I realize you guys need milk. And then he begins to tell them, what I was about to tell you is now what he's calling strong meat, and it is for those who are a bit mature. Of course, that terminology, that analogy is... Uh, 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 clear to us because when we begin to talk about now a natural baby, there are, uh, th they are not able to digest hard food. So you have now to give them milk until a certain time when now they can begin to digest hard stuff. Now, if you listen to this writer and look at the church, especially in Kenya today, I don't think we have a generation that needs to hear this, what the writer is saying, than the current generation, where the gospel has been here since the time of the missionaries, but many people would prefer milk. They would prefer the easy things. And you, by the way, when you remember what Jesus said when he was dealing with the Samaritan, not the Samaritan, this uh, Syrophoenician woman who wanted a miracle, and Jesus told her, we cannot, I cannot give the food that is meant for the children to the dogs. And the woman kept on insisting, no, yes, the time of the Gentiles have not yet come, but I still think you can do something. And Jesus, of course, worked the miracle. But even from that, uh, dealing with Jesus, with that woman, you realize according to Jesus, miracles, healing, things like that, is food for who? For the children. Because the mature as they begin to get to God's word, as they begin to understand what now the writer is calling uh, uh, solid food, they are able to work out some of the solutions for themselves. And I know that sounds like a contradiction, but that is the truth of the matter. The more you mature, the less you rely on miracles. Praise the name of the Lord. Because now you begin to work together with God to make things work. That, that, so that you don't feel like a... Does that mean then I will not need God? And you can get that from the journey of Israel. In the wilderness, they depended on manna from above. When they went to the land, manna ceased. Now, if you want food, you clear the bush, you plant your seed, you water it, you, you work with God to produce food. And that is what God had for them. Now, if you look at the language used here, the solid food is talking about is when a believer now is at that level where they can digest the kind of things that God wants them to digest. Let me read for you a scripture just to, to explain this better. Let's go to the book of Judges. There's a young man who never ceases to amaze me. He is the son of Gideon. We know Gideon from Judges chapter 6. And let me read a story about the son that I think will explain what now uh, uh, the writer here is saying. Let's go to chapter 8 of Judges, verse 20. After Gideon has now captured the, 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 the two kings, Ziba and Zalmona, 8, not 6. Judges 8, verse 20. And he said unto, uh, uh, unto Jether, his firstborn, up and slay them. But the youth drew not his sword, for he feared because he was yet a youth. I want you to look at that. He was yet a youth. 21. And so Ziba and Zalmona, Zalmona said, Rise yourself and kill us, for as a man is, so is his strength. As a man is, so is his strength. So Gideon arose and killed Ziba and Zalmona, and they took the crescent ornaments that were on their camels' necks. Now, just a quick explanation so that you understand what is going on here. In those days, no one was paid to go to battle. So when you went to the battleground, whoever you killed, 
you took what was on them and that became your pay. That's why even here, these guys have already been captured. But you see, until you kill them, whatever they are wearing uh, because of their, their, their tradition, you couldn't take it until you have killed them. So uh, Ziba and Zalmona were still wearing their golden ornaments and that was supposed to be the pay for the one who now finishes them off. Gideon is a father. He has just won a great victory for the Lord, and he wants to bring his son, his firstborn, so that the young man can also participate, can also begin to earn something from a battle that was started by his father. I'm using that because I'm, I know all of us know where this started. When Gideon was told by the Lord, you know, destroy the altars, blah, 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 then he, he has actually fought the battle. He has defeated these guys. He has tied them. They are already bound. So this young man does not need to fight. He just needs to finish what his father started. But then he will get the reward that was supposed to belong to his father. But look at the boy. The Bible says he was afraid because he was yet a youth. Now connect with what we saw in Hebrews. Strong meat belongs to those who are of age. Here is a person who is being given an opportunity to get, to reap, to harvest what was uh, actually belonging to the father. But now he cannot. And that's why now even these guys are telling Gideon, we know how these, thing, these, these things work. As a man is, so is his strength. The question is this. If you look at the life that you are living right now, if we were to analyze the church right now, even what, in quotes, Jesus already defeated on the cross and left for us bound, in quotes, so that we can just finish the job and get the gold. Are we ready to arise and kill? Ama, like this young man, we will hesitate because we are not ready for something more, more solid. And this is where now you realize the writer was telling these guys, there is so much to speak about Jesus Christ being the high priest after the order of Melchizedek, but you people are not able, you do not have the capacity to understand these things, so let me just spare you this. There is a, a, a funny statement in King James about the elders of Israel. I will not go there, but uh, I'll just quote it. When Moses had a problem with the leadership of Israel, the Lord told him, bring some of the elders with you up the mountain. I want them to sense the presence that you sense when you come up there. And then they will somehow fear the Lord. And then when you go back there, they will help you in leading the people. Why? They have at least now come to the mountain with you. So that, see your pastor, Pekeake, and Ajua, hiyo kitu, anatu, birianga. And the Bible says Moses brought these men. And then they came to the mountain. And uh, King James has a, a, a funny way of putting it. Because it, they saw the elders of Israel went before the Lord. They saw where the feet of the Lord were stepping like there was fire. They ate in the presence of the Lord. And then King James adds, and the Lord did not lay his hand upon any of them. I know you may take that to mean he did not kill them. But also, when you now begin to you just study that word, the hand of the Lord was upon so and so, it begins to bring out a different meaning. You remember Elijah? And the hand of the Lord was upon him, and he outran a horse. Remember that? The hand of the Lord came upon so and so, and he prophesied. The hand of the Lord came upon Samson, a kangoa gate. God looked at these guys. These guys, the only thing I can give them is food. <laughs> Let them eat. Now I end. I can't lay my hand on them. And that's why, of course, now when you look at the troubles Moses is having later, you can actually trace them to that point that the guys who are supposed to be understanding together with the senior pastor, they went to the presence of the Lord. The only thing they came out with is a full stomach because God looked at them. Are they ready to bear the burden of the Lord? Are they ready for anything else apart from food? There it is. 
And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw God. They did eat and a drink. I mean, that, I don't know whether you can get that. You have a chance to appear in the presence of the Lord, and you appear there. God looks at you. That's how you tamfanya nini. He realizes, well, the only thing that excites this person is food. Let, them, let me give them food. Moses has had gone to the same mountain. He came back with the Ten Commandments. The same presence, the same mountain. He went there, spent time with the Lord, and God saw, this guy can carry the Ten Commandments back to my people. These guys went there, they saw God, they ate and they drank, and that was it. Because God saw they can't stomach anything beyond that. They are at that level where the only thing that can excite them is food. Let me ask you a question. If you look at where the church in Kenya is today, do you think uh, we are far from this scenario? Because even when we go for meetings, when we go for uh, uh, worship services, or whichever church meeting, when you listen to the people, what they will be talking about, the expectation of their heart is not anything heavy from the Lord. Actually, that's why, and uh, like Prophet Jal keeps on saying, that's why teachers like me are not popular. Because they keep on telling you the hard stuff, how to. But now the guy will come and say, it doesn't matter what, uh, where you are in your Christian growth. Just receive. Utaweka watu mpaka inche. Because they came, they saw, they ate and they drank and went home. But when you begin to teach them how to be an overcomer, no, don't teach me that. Pray for me to receive overcoming. You know, <laughs> what, uh, you know, one of the funny things we get in Pakistan, of course, the church there is, uh, is still young, so we, uh, we, we put up with it. You go to a not, not, pastor's meeting. So you preach to these guys. After the conference, they come. They tell you, pastor, pray, pray, pray me. Grow. Because you want to, to laugh. Because if the pastor wants you to pray for him so that he can grow, you know, you try to imagine, so how do you pray for someone to grow? Receive growth. <laughs> or you command, I command you, Pastor Kiroben, grow. I command you. But of course, you know, the church there is, a, the gospel has not been there for long. So anyway, you pray for him, but of course, not what he thinks you are praying. The good thing is you don't have to pray in English. So now, Pastor Kiswaili, Mungu idea huyu mchungaji, ajue si kuwekelewa mikono, nasa ayo hata unatikisa he thinks... There is something you are imparting, but actually you are praying a different prayer because now you realize you can't pray for someone to grow, right? I mean, if that were possible, especially as pastors, we wouldn't struggle raising kids. I mean, I just pray for Effie, I command him, grow. And uh, he's 20 years old, and Tunamalizana, me and right? But it doesn't work like that. The guys we started reading in Hebrews, the writer is telling them, by now, let's go back there. Because according to him, the time that they have been exposed to the gospel, they were supposed to have been growing by this time. He says, for when for the time you ought to be teachers, you still need that one should teach you again. Of course, chapter 6, he begins there and says, now laying aside the first pr uh, principles of uh, the elementary doctrines of Christ. But that, let's go through this so that you see why he's telling them you need to, by now to be teachers. And ask me, uh, tell me if we are not still bargaining and uh, debating about the same. He's saying not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. Are we still arguing and debating about repentance? Who has repented and who has not? Wale wamefalia magunia, hawa diwa metubu sana, sisi ya tujatubu kwa sababu ya tufalia magunia. According to the writer, this is a foundation. Faith toward God, mambo ya imani, how to receive from God. 
according to him, it's a foundational issues. He goes on to speak about baptisms, verse 2. He, I mean, you look at these things, you see baptism, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, eternal judgment, but you are seeing a church, especially in Kenya, where we want to keep on talking about now the things he's talking about, the elementary things of the gospel, where the believer does not want to grow. They want to rely on one person to go and uh, hear God for himself. Then uh, the current trends now, Bishop Kungu, Aende Aombe, you know, Sikuzile Ataomba, then Ajikuwe Mungu Aweke Kwa Chupa, Alafu Akuji Atuzie Hiyo Maji. The question is, ye yeah, alitoa mungu wapi? Hiyo, hiyo mungu hata kama tuseme kweli alikona, na anointing oil ikona mungu. Alimtoa wapi? Ye yeah, aliuziwa? Hapana. Si ye yeah, alienda akatafuta. Mpaka akampata. Lakini zizi atutaki kuenda kutafuta. Tunataka ye yeah, yaende atafute. Ye yeah, yeah, die bishop. Akuje. Agawe kwa chupa. Atuuzie. Because money is easier than uh, paying the cost, the real cost, right? I mean, you tell a person, uh, like one man of God challenged us, if you hold a conference and say, all those who want to become ministers, come. And then you say, mutapokea fire. And you'll go and become a, a pastor overnight. Ata walevi watakuja. Nani ataki ukua pastor? But if you hold the same conference and begin to say, I will teach you principles that you must do so that you become, uh -uh, aguna mtu atakuja. yet even Dr. Luke writing the gospel and the book of Acts, there is something he talked about. He said, uh, telling the, 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 the young man or whoever it is, the Ophilus, he told him, uh, I'm writing about the things that Jesus Christ began both to do and teach. Jesus did not just uh, tell people to receive something. He began to do something and to teach the same things. When you look at what uh, Luke is talking about and look at what now the book of Hebrews is talking about, you realize there is a need for us to become people who are capable of receiving the hard stuff. There is a pastor who was asking the other day uh, why Nakuru is different, uh, you know, compared to the other cities in Kenya. And uh, many people try to answer him. Then we began to answer them. Because the truth of the matter is, Nakuru is different because for many years, especially the older generation, Nakuru was founded on solid teachings, not some excitement, because I remember the 90s, early 2000s, we would attend conferences organized by different ministries in Akuru, Kenya House of Prayer, those guys, Kinasegun. One session in that conference, like one I attended, it had three sessions the whole day, because a session started at nine, up to one. No break, nothing. And there is no singing. Serious teaching. Then you come for another one after lunch. Three hours, solid teaching. I mean, you would be taught things because you are trying to digest. What, what am I being taught? And then after that, of course, you are not just hearing. You begin to allow that to sing in your life and to make it work for you. And that is why at the end of the day, this city, this area, this county managed to raise ministers who are a bit more solid compared to many others all over this nation. Nakuru is the only place I know where Mukutano I receive, I eat watu. That's why you don't see a lot of, I can tell you this for free. That is why you don't see a lot of evangelistic zeal in Nakuru because when people are used to teachings a lot, uh, but the latter produces better believers who do not need to rely on the man of God. Who did, do, do not need to call the man of God at 2 a.m. Pastor Niombe, inini, kuna panya imepita hapa. Na, inakaa kama imetumwo. No. Hata kama imetumwo, 
Sina wewe unaishungulikia, unaiuliza ulitumwa okay, eh, ni mimi ulitumwa kwangu niko hapa. Na unaishungulikia, unastahili kuja baadaye ya kuambia pastor by the way, saa nane kuna panya ilikuwa imetumwa na nimeishungulikia. But we are, we want to be people who like the writer is saying, though we should be teachers, we are still struggling with the issues, foundational issues. How I pray for you that Throughout this conference, you may allow yourself to go to that depth that he is talking about. It's good you have come. We are in the presence of the Lord. Show God that it is not just food that you need. Tell God lay, to lay his hand upon you. Don't be like the nobles of Israel. Your statement was as good as you can say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, it sounds funny that they saw God, they ate and they drank, but the Lord could not lay his hand on any of them. It was, for him it was, this is a waste of, a waste of resources. Wacha wakule, waende nyumbani. Hakuna kitu ingini naweza wafanyini. But if you allow God to begin to speak about deeper issues, to begin to show you what needs uh, you need to do, and as we conclude, allow me to highlight some of the statements maybe you have seen with the prophets and also now uh, a trend you see with Jesus. You remember how, uh, like Micaiah, when he was called by the, by the king and he was asked, will I, I want to go to battle. Will I conquer? You remember the first answer he gave? Go and you will conquer. Because I know that's what you want to hear. Actually, even the commander who came to fetch him, he alikuwa tayari ya mempea for one one. By the way, wale wengini wote, unabi hii dio template. Kila mtu wapa anasema, enda utashinda, enda utashinda, enda utashinda. Ata wewe na kuomba, please. Uziende kuwaribu maneno. Enda useme tu hivyo. So, alipaulizo, alimuambia nini? Go and konga. But then the, the king knew better. Haka muulisa, do I have to make you swear that whatever I am telling you is the truth? And now the, the prophet now told him the truth. Because the first round, he knew these guys are hearing what they want to hear. And you remember Paul saying that, that in this generation, people will gather a multitude of teachers who are telling them exactly what they want to hear. Not what they need to hear, but what they want to hear. What they want to hear, it doesn't matter the kind of life you are living, you are okay. It doesn't matter even if you are living in sin, you are okay. That's where now this issue of super grace, double grace is coming in. Where we, people just want encouragement that it doesn't matter what I do in the body. When you begin to tell them you need to stop this, when you tell them the gospel of John where he, where he tells this king, you cannot marry your brother's wife. Of course, they don't want that. Micaiah gave the king what he wanted to hear first and waited. I want to know whether you are ready for the real truth, the hard truth. And many of us need to go again to the Lord and ask him, is what you have, to, the dreams I'm having? Am I just having dreams because that is what I want to dream? Oh, is this what you really want to tell me? And you will be surprised when the Lord tells you, I, I've been waiting for you. Unataka sasa githeri, yes, sasa githeri inaonjanga hivi. Wachana maziwa. But you realize when God begins to give you the real stuff, when God begins to give you the real meat, then you are coming of age, your life is now, you remember the words of Zalbun and Ziba, that as a man is, so is his strength. As you begin to eat solid food, you become stronger in the faith. You become strengthened. You are now able to deal not only with the issues of other people because uh, we, we need also to go back to ourselves. There are issues I need to deal with in my own life. I mean, atutafuti mungu kwa sahabu ya watu wengine. Mungu nisaidia niombe yange watu, waanguke. Ni vizuri waanguke, lakini mimi nitakuwa nimesaidika kwanza. Can I deal with, ninaweza kuangusha vitu zangu? Vitu za kwangu, rather. Because it's easy, kusema nikifanya hivi, watu waanguke, lakini, kwangu nataka apia nikifanya hivyo, 
shida zinaanguka si sawa because i have been strengthened strength will not come from milk let me give you just two things and we close one that meat he is talking about is now and you can get that in peter the raw uh inaitangwa nini let me just put it this way the raw word of god by raw i mean let us go back to the culture of just reading the word of god for ourselves forget about ile umehubiriwa na uka someone is interpreting it for you let us go back to personal devotion you will never become a strong christian like i told the the the, the, the other team we are training the other day you will never become deep even in your worship all in your christian walk if you are shallow in your reading of the word of god ile maneno ya zamani tulikuwa ya new believers that bible study ni ile unaamka asubuhi unafanya biblia hivi uh this is the word of the lord for me today wachana na hiyo hiyo ni ya new believer actually hiyo ni ya yule hata hajakuwa new believer ni ya mwenye anataka kukuwa new believer you should be able to study the word of the lord for yourself genesis to revelation by the way when you look at what this guy was telling them that by now you need to be teachers when you go back to jesus he stayed with his men for three and a half years and he knew they were ready for international missions because yale waambia nendeni mataifa yote after how long three and a half years how many believers do we have in our churches pastor kiroben mtu amekaa five years hawezi ongoza ibada waja kuhubiri hawezi ongoza unamwambia aongoze zile madhokodhani utasikia you'll see wonders signs and miracles na ni kuongoza tu ibada tu anafanya sarakazi atatangaza mpaka matangazo ya chief na ako miaka 5 kanisani mwingine ataanza kusema sasa hiyo kitabu e, kitabu ile ya inaitangwa nini you begin to look at this person you begin to realize they are Jesus stayed with his men for three and a half years but how many of you umekaa kwa Yesu three and a half years wacha na ile ya Sunday school to hesabu tu tangu siku ile uliokoka three and a half years and above So you see every one of you here apart from a few you should be ready to go to Ukraine right now Sisi so, alisema ni deni ulimwenguni kote ama ulimwengu kote ni hapa tu Igaton you should be ready but if we tell you to go there utaanza kusema sijaomba so utaomba lini I'm not ready when will you ever be ready and how will you be ready if you don't even read the bible the other thing is you need to desire you you can read without because unakumbuka ile ya shule you can read to pass an exam ile ya kukram mpaka unakuwa na ka formula ya kukram unakumbuka ile tulikuwa tunafunzwa ni za 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 guitar ilikuwa inaenda aje oh cows eat grass so that's a formula to remember the <laughs> the wires of the guitar from top to bottom i don't remember whether it is from top or the other way whichever but uh, that's a formula to cram but how much of it is helping me no but when i have a desire i don't just want to cram i have a desire for real food then god begins even to reveal if you can do what the men of old used to do kina by the way if you are a prayerful person I know you know guys like Raffen Hill, Leonard Raffen Hill, uh, uh, EM Bounds. You read about those guys and uh, they would go with the Bible to the forest alone. They would kneel mpaka snow ina melt. Mahali amepiga magoti. Mpaka snow ina melt. Akisoma tu akiambia Mungu si unionyeshe hii maandiko inamaanisha nini. Sasa shida sisi tuko na gugu. So badala ya nipige magoti ya igugu hii scripture inamaanisha nini? Sasa napata ideas za watu wengi ambao hata hawajaokoka na nasema sasa niko na revelation. No. Until God speaks to your spirit you do not have a revelation. You have information. It only becomes a revelation if it is from within God put it there. Let's stand on our feet. Of course you understand lunch hours are normally very short. 
So may you allow the Lord to, throughout this conference, to speak deeper things. Begin to tell the Lord, I'm ready to, I'm ready for solid meat. I'm ready to graduate from where I've been. I'm ready to kill what I need to kill. Kama uyo kijana wa Gideon. Father, in Jesus' name, how I pray, may each one of us, from this day onwards, may we desire solid food. May we not be amused. May we not be mesmerized by milk. May we desire the solid food that you want to give to us at a time like this. We bless your name for the gracious words that you will speak to us throughout this conference. We pray that your will will be done. Let none of us come into this meeting and only go away with the food for the stomach. May we go away with your hand upon us for greater things in our lives and for kingdom purposes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So as you prepare your offering, allow me just to give you the breakdown of how the conference will be. Just prepare your offering. We are going to give. Today we're going to have another session at 5 that uh, is going to take us to see, uh, uh, around 6.30. Then tomorrow we're going to have the same program, that is lunch hour and the evening. Friday at 10, we are going to have a session for pastors and church elders. That is from 10 to 12. Then we shall still have the lunch hour and the evening meetings. Saturday, we're going to have from 9.30, not 10, 9.30, a meeting with, uh, or rather for all uh, pastors, elders, and other church workers. By church workers, we mean you may not be a leader per se, but there is something you do in church. You lead worship. You are a Sunday school teacher. You are an usher. There is some ministry you are involved in. That Saturday meeting is going to, for, to be for you. Then on, at 2.30, we're going to have the evening session for Saturday, and uh, that will be now for the week. Sunday morning, we have our two services. That is 8.30 and 10.30. Then we have a final rally at 2.30. So that's how the program will run. And I pray that the Lord will continue to speak to you solid stuff. Beyond what the preacher is saying, may you hear something that is going to build you. Praise the name of the Lord. Otherwise, let's stand on our feet. You can give through... Give me my phone. You can give through M-Pesa. There is that number on the wall. Or you can uh, uh, give uh, it in cash and the Lord is going to bless you. So let's just give, and then we're going to uh, say the final prayer, and may the Lord bless you. Just bring your offering. Bless your name. So our guests are still coming in. I've just seen Pastor Sam has just drove, uh, driven in as we were concluding. The other guest, Apostle David Juma, is still coming. So we shall have all of them speaking to us, and we bless the name of the Lord. Remain standing as we conclude with our word of prayer. Father God, I pray for each one of us, even as we receive this offering, may you bless your people. May you reach out to them and bless them in abundance. For you are a God who blesses us as we obey. And the word we have just heard, I pray, may you strengthen us. May you create in us a desire for solid food, for things that are harder, so that our life may be strengthened day by day. Bless your people as they go back to their places of work or to their studies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you. See you at five.